What's up and welcome back to another video. I hope that you are feeling good and your day is decent. Um, I got a lot of stuff that I want to talk to you all about today as it pertains to me and why I stopped being a teacher in Chicago. But first, let me say this. It's been a little bit over a week of the new year. I hope that you've been proactive. I hope you've been hitting the ground hard on your dreams and all the stuff you want to accomplish. Because if you haven't, I don't know what the hell you're waiting for. So just to give y'all a little bit of background, I have taught for about close to about three years, uh, sixth, seventh, eighth, sophomores, juniors, seniors. And originally I got into education. Um, I was very passionate. I really wanted to be able to give back. I wanted to be able to impact the youth and make a difference in their lives so that they can go off to college and do amazing things. And that didn't happen. It didn't, it didn't quite happen. It didn't quite pan out that way. I realized when I got into the, to the school system, I ran into like hella issues. Like it was just so difficult, like working in that environment, uh, primarily when um, like most of the staff, I could not relate to like my supervisors and bosses because they were all like Caucasian, um, uh, white. They, they were white. Okay. I, I don't even use Caucasian. I don't even know why I said that. They were white. And I found myself like consistently trying to tell them certain things culturally about the students and they just did not want to listen. Like they did not think that what I had to say was of any value or anything that I had to say was valid. Um, and I don't know if it was because like I was a, uh, you know, less experienced teacher. Um, I don't know if it was because I looked 14. Like, I don't, I don't know, but I always found myself like struggling to like have my voice heard. And I was always fighting on behalf of the students for stuff to happen at the school or for a culture to change or for this to happen. And it was just so, it was too much, man. Like I actually uh, realized like at a certain point that, you know, I was kind of going through the motions and the worst thing that you want to find like in a school system is a teacher that's just going through the motions. Like that's like the worst Thing. Like I went to a public high school uh, in Chicago, a Chicago public school. And I remember being in high school, early 2000s, like I had teachers that just went through the motions. Like we would come in a classroom, we could do whatever we want to. And the teacher just sitting there with a newspaper and like, just don't kill each other. Like that was the whole attitude, the whole uh, atmosphere of the school. And so I like, for me, I was like, man, I, I'm never gonna be that person. I'm never gonna be that teacher that just gives up and it's just, just be on autopilot, like while stuff is happening and just picking up a check every two weeks and it is what it is. Um, and then I started to feel myself kind of fall into that. Like I would wake up in the morning and I'm like, man, I would sit on the edge of my bed and stare at the wall for about seven seconds, like, Man, I'm so tired of these kids, man. I started to create these bonds with some of the students, even the students that was bad as hell. Like I started to, I started to kind of like appreciate them a little more. Um, once I like really got close to them and started to understand their stories and stuff, I started to appreciate them more. Um, but the more and more I started to appreciate them and their experiences, the more and more it was difficult for me to work in a school because I realized the school was so jacked up the structure and the entire like Chicago public school system was crap and it was trash. And I remember visiting uh, Francis Parker. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of the school. Francis Parker is a really nice school. It's like uh, kind of north of downtown, very nice, like prestigious school for elementary and high school students. And I remember taking a tour through the school and I'm like, this is low key a college. Like this is, is this is like a, a college, like it's better than some junior colleges. I remember visiting that school and getting back to work and just being so pissed off, right? Like I was so mad because I'm like, why are those kids getting that type of quality education? And these students, like, I found that the more and more I started to create these like really strong bonds with some of the students, um, like whether they were like some of the top tier students or some of the, 
the students who struggle both with like the discipline and with their grades, I really started to have an appreciation for their stories, where they came from, um, their struggle. And I started to get even more infuriated with the system that was failing them. And I didn't want to be a part of it. And I just remember reading statistics and stuff. And it was like one out of every four black Chicago public school students are at a failing school. And I realized at that moment that I cannot change this system. Like this is a for real system that's been set in place and it has not been changed for whatever reason. And I can't just go into one school system and change that. We come here every day, the kids hate the school. The staff, they hate the school. Like we passing each other in the hallway with like orange juice and coffee. Like, man, if we could just make it to Friday, like if we could make it to like winter break, if we could make it to spring. And I just hate it. I hate it working. Like I hate it living like that. Like I hate it coming into a community where everybody that's there do not want to be there. The kids don't want to be there. The, the teachers, the staff don't want to be there. The parents don't want to come to report card pickup. Like no one likes it there. So I left and I like didn't have a job lined up or anything, but the one thing I knew for sure that I was going to like be able to leave and get immediately was my happiness. And I think that's the message is just to continue to strive for your happiness. And that's the one thing that people can't take away from you. Like whether it's a job that you don't like or a school that you hate, um, always strive to be happy and don't let your current predicament dictate like where you can go. So what am I doing now? I am a full-time photographer and videographer. And it's a joy really because I capture like the most happiest and precious moments of people's lives whether it's weddings or proms or sweet 16s or gender reveals, like I'm at the forefront of the happiest moments of people's lives each and every day, every time. And it's great just to be able to like give people like these videos and these photos and they can look at them years from now. And it's dope, like I love it. And it's, it's something that like keeps me on edge and it keeps my creative juices flowing and my artistic natures just at an all time high. Um, it's dope. The cool thing is I still get a chance to uh, mentor teenagers. I still get a chance to communicate with some of my uh, students that I used to teach and ones that have graduated still reach out to me on Facebook and Instagram. So it's, it's pretty cool, man. I love it and I wouldn't trade it. Uh, just continue to put yourself as number one priority in 2019 and start to see doors open. And sometimes you have to take a walk of faith and uh, it may not be the easiest thing. Like when I walked away from the school, which was hard because, you know, as a teacher, like you never want to walk away from the students in the middle of the school year. Like that's like forbidden. Like you can go to jail for that. Not, not really, but you, I mean, can you? Once I put myself as number one priority, um, then I start to see a lot of things kind of happen and a lot of things start to shift and move and it's been great. So that's, that's the message for today. So if you enjoy watching this video, make sure that you hit a big thumbs up and you like it. Make sure that you share it so other people can see it. And if you want to subscribe, go ahead. That means like you get alerts every single time I drop content. Um, in the meantime, trust your dopeness.